Hello, gents. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. We really appreciate you to be here, even though it's the last session of this best ever summit. So thanks a lot for staying here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Victor Estival. I'm a technical marketing engineer altogether. I know it's weird, technical marketing engineer without Lou, but yeah, that's me. I'm the responsible to create videos, demos. Uh, we have a super nice blog in Cloudforms, which is cloudfornsnow.com. We also have a blog in Ansible, but I don't need to advertise that but because you all know the Ansible blog, right? So that's easy. Uh, with me today, I have uh, Moises Rivera. Hello. He is an essay in Spain. He is um, the technical lead for all the things that are related to infrastructure, whether they are storage, cloud, or whatsoever. We did create a couple of slides to introduce ourselves so you can know a bit more about us. So, Moi. Hello, uh, thank you for coming. As Victor said, uh, my name is Moises, Moises Rivera. Moi for my friend, that is very short. Uh, yes, this picture is from a weekend because I'm a toy soldier. Okay, uh, I play airsoft and I joined Red Hat uh, say just, uh, six years ago. Uh, as Victor said, uh, I'm responsible for all the infrastructure, cloud, automation, and storage in Iberia, Spain, and Portugal. And that's me. I'm also based in Spain, which means two things. My accent is a bit weird, and I talk too fast. So if for whatever reason you miss anything I'm saying, just hold the hand and say, hey, please slow down, because I know I speak quite fast. I can speak fast in Spanish, by the way. And as you can see in the picture, I'm a very normal guy. Uh, this is a Minion hoodie in a heavy metal concert with the Beware of the Troll. I love Lego, I love Star Wars, and of course, I love the cloud. And today, what I want to talk about is about this management and automation story. Uh, you've been hearing uh, during the whole summit, this is key for us, if one, it's one of our three pillars. But for us, it's transversal to everything. Whether you are into the app dev or you are into the infrastructure side, you always hear about Ansible. So that's one of the reasons because we wanted to do this session. Sometimes we do acknowledge we have some confusion and some, um, what is the line between platforms, Ansible, even satellite? So that's the reason because we did this session. We will try to answer this question. For us, and for everybody else, as you can see in IDC, automation is critical. 86% of the people, they say that automation is either mission critical or super important to the future cloud strategy, and most of the organizations are planning something about automation for 2020. Automation is not new. We are not here to reinvent the wheel. A scripts has been there since forever. The idea is to make a scripts in a better, easier, and consumable way. And the most important, let's try not to screw anything. CloudFonds, what it does, it delivers services across hybrid environments. So we do service automation, we do policy and compliance, operational visibility, and unified hybrid management. In other words, CloudFonds is meant to be the tool to day one. In other words, do the provisioning. That's one of the main duties of CloudFonds. We do some more stuff, but as you can see, it's more into this offsite, but related to the infrastructure. So for this hybrid load cloud management, we do public cloud, we do hybrid infrastructure on-premise and private cloud. So we do mostly on, most, uh, on, on every single provider uh, you can think about. Our key message here, let's try to automate everything. That's not completely true, of course. As you can imagine, in every single environment, if you try to achieve 100%, that's not, really, that's not really feasible. You really want to go for 18 winning. That's something we want to do. We have so many definitions about what Ansible is. We just pick one of them, the one that is coming directly from the BU, where I work for. So this is the definition that I found like it's quite funny. It's the most popular open source automation platform. We had a goal, unify, provisioning, configuration, and application deployment. And the result was Ansible. Um, for those that you don't know, the word Ansible is coming from this book, the Ender. So that's a tool they, uh, they, they use to communicate across super long distance. And that's exactly the idea behind Ansible. When you think about Ansible, we do so many things. 
As today, we have more than 900 models currently on the community version. On September, we did two big announcements. On one hand, we talk about this new offering for support, which is the Ansible engine. So now you can also have support for your Ansible playbooks and the engine themselves, apart from, cloud, from, from Tower. And we also did this announcement about the Ansible for networking. So for us, networking is one of the key parts. During this year, you'll see a lot of improvement into the networking area. Apart from that, we also talk about the new and super great open source versions of, of, of Ansible Tower, which is AWX. So for us, Ansible is a universal language. So Ansible is a way we have to speak to business, dev, network, and IT operation. This is super tough. I wish it could be easier. Sometimes it happens to all of us. We are very techies. We try to talk to any CTO, CIO. We struggle. So we try with Ansible to translate whatever business wants into something that is actually consumable and something that is meaningful for the IT guys. So that's a very big mission. I wish we were more successful. It takes time, but I hope we will get there. So we will start with the demo. No more marketing bullshit as a service. Um, this demo is basically focused on two days, day one and day two. My part, which is day one, is going to be short. Basically, what we are going to show is how can you uh, provision hybrid services in cloud forms. Um, this is the environment I have. Basically, I have um, Ref, I have OpenStack, I have CloudFonts, I have my IT user. And what I'm going to do, it's super, super easy. I will deploy a service, it can be whatever, that is going to be made out of a load balancer to web servers. Load balancer and web server one are both going to be running on Ref. Web server two, on the other hand, is going to be running on OpenStack. So, looks easy, right? In order to make this not very confused, what we are going to do is we are going to switch between our slides and the actual demo. So you can track what the heck we are, going to, we are doing, because otherwise sometimes it's a bit confusing, as I said. So <clears throat> I go to my CloudFonts environment. I will log in as my IT user. And by the way, since the Wi-Fi is not working super great, what we did is we already pre-deployed an environment so we can carry on with the demo without need to wait for 10 minutes until all the environment is already provisioned. I want to show you my services. This is the one that I already have deployed for you. And again, apologies for the Wi-Fi. It's taking its time. Well, we have quite a bunch of service here, as you can see. So this is the environment I already provisioned for, for this demo. As I said, it's made by a load balancer, Web Server 1, Web Server 2. If I go to Web Server 1, it's going to be running on Rev. Whenever this wants to run, I'm so sorry. I can see this is a Rev Hat running on Rev with all the stuff. If I go back to my services, I go to the other one. Maybe it's a bit tiny. I can make this a bit bigger. I go to my Web2. This is running on OpenStack. So the first question when I saw this, uh, customers usually ask me is, how hard is to do this? It basically takes a few minutes. I'm going through how can I create this kind of service in a minute. So <clears throat> as you can see, uh, I don't have access to the instance, sorry. It's because um, I just took the permissions for another demo before. Um, let me go through the catalog. It's taking ages today. So. Those are my services, and those are my catalog items. What I did for this demo in Red Hat Summit, basically, I have my catalog bundle. So in CloudFonts, we have, in order to build these hybrid services, two concepts. We have the catalog item, and then a catalog bundle. What is a catalog bundle? It's just a collection 
of catalog items. As simple as that. I can define any of my services based on a hardware definition. So in this case, as you can see, this is an item type ref, the request info. This is the environment I want to deploy. I can set to say hardware, the network, customize, schedule, all those things. Once I'm happy with that, what I will do, it will I will just aggregate all of them, all of them into my bundle. So when I go to my resources, you can see that I'm provisioning a load balancer, web A, web B. All of them are going to be on the same action order. I will first provision my load balancer and then I will provision my web servers. So let's go to that. As simple as going to service catalog, I'll go to my summit. I click order. I will provision, I will provide a service name. Something meaningful, of course, we're awesome. And click submit. So what is going to happen right now? <coughs> I'm going to kick off the provisioning of my machines on Rev and OpenStack. We will come back later to check if the service is already working or not. So now I'm coming back to the other one. This is the Ansible part. So for this part, the day two operations demo, we are going to use Ansible Tower. I guess, I hope that most of you know is that Ansible is simple, powerful, and it doesn't need any agent. So what does Ansible Tower offers to you? It, offer, it offers the control. You can schedule and centralize all jobs. It also provides you knowledge. We will get visibility and compliance over all the tasks you want to do on your infrastructure. And also delegation. We have a super powerful role-based access and cell service. That's exactly what we are going to show in the second part of the demo. Questions so far? I carry on then. So this is environment you'll see on the demo. We have three personas. We have IT operator, we have IT admin operator, and we have IT root. This is our control set. We have an Ansible tower, we have nudges, and we have a repo. So the Ansible tower is connected to GitHub. And in GitHub, we are keeping all the config and all the Ansible playbook. So that's our repository for our infrastructure as code. That's what we actually do. So what do we have in our repo? That's our artifact repo. All the software that I'm going to deploy will be on this repo. Then we have the three VMs that we already provisioned on the first step. We have our load balancer and then we have our two web servers. Remember, one in Rev, the other one in OpenStack. We all have a couple of duties. So that's the way we have to define personas. So the IT operator will do all this um, get config, HTTP start, stop, restart, and the IT admin operator will do the environment deploy, HTTP modify config, etc. So we can have different duties for different personas and we can map those personas to users in Ansible Tower. That's really, really easy to do. It's a matter of seconds, not even minutes. So those are the tasks we are going to cover in the demo. First, we will deploy the environment. This is the point in which um, Moy and I, we had a bit of an argument because he said, well, this is part of the day one. I said, well, for me, that's part of the day two. If I'm, if I'm providing purely infrastructure as a service, I don't care whatever you're running on your machine. Actually, I don't want to have any credentials. That's the reason because we usually make the line in this um, day two and day one on the provisioning stuff. So that's why this is the first task for our environment. However, he made a good point. Many customers include the software deployment as a day one operation. So that's one of the things you can do whether you use CloudForms or, or Ansible. Then we will modify the configuration. Someone open a change and we need to change the port because you know security guys are very nice and they make us change the <coughs> HTTP port for whatever wonderful reason <coughs> that they only know. And then last but not least, we will integrate with third party tools. We all have so much stuff in our environment, right? If I talk about CNDB, load balancer, firewalls and so on and so forth. So we just took um, one example, integrating with our monitoring tool and also play with that. Let's try not to make uh, false positives and then try not try to make people to freak out. So, please. Okay, thank you so much, Victor. Okay, so the first task is uh, the environment deploy. So, we will start 
with, as Victor says, with uh, three servers, uh, with the load balancers that is balancing in the two web servers. The web servers are uh, with the minimal Red, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and uh, is configuring to get all the software from the repo, okay? So, uh, after deploy the environment, we will get this scenario. We will get the load balancer listening in the H team uh, port and the web server too in the H team port. Also, the NIOS uh, will be monitoring the uh, two web servers. So, there we go. We will go to login as admin operator in tower. How many of you have never been, have never seen tower before? So guys, tower, tower guys, yeah. now you know each other. <laughs> this is the first screen, uh, they have a uh, resume uh, about uh, all that we have configuring in tower. So, uh, it's very important to know that uh, we have the inventory, okay? We have a demo inventory where we populate with groups or host, but as you know, or as you can see, it's empty, okay? So, if I will go to the templates and I run the environment deploy, okay, they will start a workflow deployment all the software needed that, uh, that we need to uh, deploy the environment and to start to work with him. So the, the first task and one of the main, <laughs> because we need uh, the groups and the host, we need to populate the inventory, is one synchronization, okay? We use a, invent a dynamic inventory. So uh, we will go to check now that after the synchronization, the demo, demo inventory, they create many groups, okay, the admin server, that is the tower machine, load balancer, the load balancer machine, of course, the monitoring and the web server. Here we can see all the servers that the, the synchronization discover and uh, put in the inventory. We can check in the job tab how the workflow is running. So, at this point, we deploy the software for the Apache server, we deploy the software for the HPA proxy server, uh, we deploy the configuration. It's very important to understand that the infrastructure as code, as Victor says, is uh, we need the configuration and only to have uh, one source uh, of true, okay? And this source of true is our uh, GitHub, okay? So after deploying the configuration, they uh, restart the, the, the services and we deploy the uh, one site uh, for, for the demo. And now, if I will go to Nagios, as you know, here is the local host, but don't worry. After the workflow finish, we have inside Nagios configuring the web servers one and web servers two. Okay, so they finish well, and I will try to connect to the load balancer it's okay, it's working fine. So, but I try to connect directly to web server one and web server two. That is okay, you know? So, the next task. That's, that's a marketing summary, the one that I'm going to do <laughs> right now. So, as you can see, in Tower we have a bunch of concepts, right? I guess you are all familiar with Ansible playbooks. 
That's easy. I have a playbook, I have a target, I execute my playbook, that's it. The idea of Tower is going one step ahead. So I have this concept of inventory. So what is inventory? Again, it's just a group of, of hosts. This can be dynamic, can be static, whatever you want. But, and you can have as many inventories as you want. And one of the key parts related to the RBAC is that we can map inventories to group of users. So for security, that's great. Then we have the concept of projects. So what the heck is a project? We don't have this concept in, in, in Ansible, right? A project is just a repository for all of our stuff. Every playbook, anything I need, any config file is going yeah. to be in the project. The template, however, okay. is the association between the inventory and the project. When we want to do this association, we have the job template, the template. And every single instance I do of my template is going to be a job. So if we put all these concepts together, that's exactly what Moi did. And if you see, this is something that we just released in, cloud, in, in Tower 3.2. This is what we call the workflows. And this changed a bit the paradigm of how we build the playbooks. If you remember the old days of the playbook, we used to have this super long playbook with a lot of roles and so on and so forth. We are changing that. If you go to our best practices, this is what we actually recommend. We usually call this micro playbooks. Yes. So they are sure. basically <clears throat> small pieces of software that are actually doing one single task. I have this micro playbook that deploys HTTP as Moisos. I have this one that does the configuration. This one that does whatever. The advantage here is that every of these playbooks can belong to a different project can be maintained by the different team and is re responsible someone else. So if you put all these pieces together, I hope you get a better view of what's this super day two operation <coughs> that he is showing right now. That was the marketing summary. So I, I think that we have a problem with the connection, Victor. Again? So okay. yes, I think. Please, can you check? It's up and running. Yeah? Yeah, might be something else, like the signal or something like that. They don't connect. We may need to switch back to the Wi-Fi. We try to, to connect to Red Hat Summit Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, no questions so far? Everybody understands what is a project, what is inventory, what is a job? Yeah. Pretty much. So this concept of the micro playbook is something that we will start to see more and more often. Um, now, how this translates into the Ansible Galaxy? Well, that's a different story. In Ansible Galaxy, we will keep roles, and what you will see is many people <coughs> creating playbook that is actually a role. That's it. Again, we try to look for the smallest units as, units as possible. If we have small units, then think about them like Lego pieces. No, I'm a Lego fan. So you can build super ni something super nice together if you add some of these pieces. So let's see if we just um, okay. we cover the connection. Uh, I think that yes. Hopefully. Sorry. At least you can see this is not a video. No. <laughs> it could. <coughs> yes, sure. So the the second task. Thanks, Victor. If you remember, we have the low balancing uh, listening in the H team port and the uh, two web server listening in the H team port. Okay. So. Uh, now we will do a secondary task that is modify the uh, listening port. Okay. So after deploy, uh, um, after run this task, we will uh, have this scenario. We will have the uh, low balancer listening in the HT port and the web servers listening in, for example, 1919. Is good? Is fine for you? Works fine? Okay. So. There we go to run the task again. So again, I will try to, to connect a uh, admin a operator. Sorry, not it's a wrong password. 
Of course, the password is ABC123. Yeah. <laughs> so, in this case, a pair one survey. Okay, this survey we uh, I, I created uh, directly from Tower. Okay, so in this case we can change two uh, parameters that is in the configuration file. So now in our sample we can change the listen port and to 1919 and launch the task. Again, this is another workflow. And the first task that we do is uh, to modify the uh, file with the new configuration, okay? So, but uh, following the infrastructure as code, we need to put the configuration, the new configuration, when? In the repo, in the GitHub repo, okay? So, we will do one JIT commit directly from our workflow, okay? So if we go to uh, GitHub, okay, and to bars, the HTTP bars, you can see that now we have 9019 as the port to listen the HTTP server, okay? So back to the tower, we can see that the, the next step is to do a synchronization from the GitHub to the tower, okay, to have the same uh, data uh, and the same configuration that I put before and in, in, the, in the GitHub. Well, if I modify the listen port of the word server, we can have fails in the Nagios, you know? Let me try to connect again. Okay, so this symbol means that now we are now monitoring this, uh, this service, okay? After change, our listening port, apply the HTTP config and restart the server they change the configuration in the load balancer. It's very important to know because the configuration in the load balancer is point to the 18 port. Now they will point to the 1919, okay? And then apply again like the configuration in the Nagios because they need to monitoring in the service that is running in the 1919 port, okay? And of course, we reactivate the monitoring. So now, if I check the NIOS, it's okay. Our service is, is, is okay. And now I will try to connect uh, uh, in this one, for example, to the low balancer. That is fine, you know. But now I will try to connect to Apache to the web server one and the web server two. What will happen? What do you think? Will it work or no? Absolutely right. They don't work. Why? Because now the server is listening in 1990. Yes, one swag for the share, please. <laughs> I don't want to put any pressure on you guys, but I have one of these left and another super nice mark. <coughs> you ask questions, you get swag. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, make sense? Any question to here or at the last? Okay, the third task, task sorry. The third task is uh, to kill one service in the web server one and trying that Nagios, they, they say, wow, the Apache in the web server one is down. And I configure uh, Nagios with a, with a handler that they use the APA for a uh, tower and they will try to run directly one 
playbook trying to restart the web server. Okay? So, Auto after, after, <laughs> after doing do this, we will have our environment very nice. Okay? In the same, in the same state that now. Okay? So, I will try now to connect to the, let's say, Summit Web 001. So, Victor, I can connect to the SSH. This is a typical question we have. Um, what, are the requirements, what are the requirements to run Ansible? Who can tell me that? SSH and Python. But <coughs> remember, having SSH, SSH doesn't mean to have interactive SSH. I can have SSH enabled without leaving, leaving, letting Moi con to connect. I don't want my admins to connect to my environments because they can screw it up, like he's going to do right now. Yeah. So what we did is we disabled, by default, interactive SSH. Now, what do you need to do, Moi? Yes. In this case, I have a new uh, role, a new uh, workflow configured uh, to activate, to enable or disable the interactive uh, session for SSH. So, as this is a very critical uh, action, I will do with the IT root user. The IT root user is the administrator of this organization. Okay? I will try to connect. Okay. So, and now in the template, now as you can see, we have a quick difference <laughs> between all the template that the administrator can uh, uh, can view, or can see, uh, and can run than the other uh, operators. Okay. So I will. run the SSH interacted with modify. Okay. This is another survey that I create directly from Tower. And they say to me, what host or group uh, will uh, enable or disable the interactive SSH session? In this case, I will enable. So, and as a critical uh, task that we run, I need to have a message uh, to see what happened, okay? So I will uh, create one integration with a, with a Slack, and now I will run the task. And you're going to bother me again in my phone, I guess, which is yes, somewhere sure. there with the Slack message, I guess. <laughs> and in this case, when the workflows and now it's running, the interactive. It's very important to, to know that in, for me, one of the best future for uh, in Tower is to see the uh, value of the bars that I use inside my workflows, playbook, or roles, okay? So the workflows uh, find You're finally You're spamming me end. again, by the way. Oh. Slack is... <laughs> Coming. Okay, so now uh, if I check, you can see that the Web 001 SSH uh, terminal, terminal interac interactive is on. Okay, so now again I will try to connect. And voila, I have the connection. So if you remember, we will go to kill the HTTP server, okay? So now we will go to pkill minus nine HTTP D server. Okay, I try. Web, they don't have. And Nadios, after a few seconds now, is in critical. But if I will go to tower, to see all the jobs that is running, they launch one, um, one template, uh, one job trying to restart. Okay, this restart 
is finished OK. And now, Nayos again is in green. So, finally, and as bonus track, <laughs> okay, uh, I will again to disable the SSH interactive in the web uh, one. Okay, so please, uh, we will go to to put this window here, and I will try to run again from the template using the SSH and run. Okay, again here web 001 off and now uh, Victor said to me that here at the United States uh, they will use uh, a lot of slack but in Europe in Europe uh, and also in, in Spain we will use telegram too. Do you know telegram? So uh, I try to send now two messages, one to Slack, another one to Telegram. Okay. So double spam, the, even better. The task, and now we have here the Slack, and now the Telegram. Okay. Oh, and this window is important because. I create the playbook, uh, but when you put, uh, when you disable the SSH interactive session, they drop all the activity connection interactive. Okay. So in this way, they close, and I have the two messages in Telegram and Slack. So. This is a challenge for you. <laughs> Homework. Okay. What did you try at home? You can we try. We put it. all the playbooks you need here, and if you need to contact us, um, it's super easy. Moy at redhat.com, bestival yes. at redhat.com. Any question you have, any money you want to send back, we welcome everything.